What's up guys, Rob Kuhn here. Today we're going to review the biggest hand ever played at the Lodge. Now, if you've been living under a rock for the last two weeks, the Lodge has recently opened up their new card room. They've had some absolutely wild, wild hands that I'll be covering on this channel, but we're going to look at today's biggest hand that has ever been played at the Lodge to date. Let's go ahead and get in the action. Yeah, people should go north. Well, goes south. To set the tone for this hand, they're playing something called the knit game. There's a lot of variations of this game, but basically the last person to have the knit button owes everyone a certain fee. In this case, I believe it was $2,000 or something like $14,000 they would be owed. Well, I don't want to have, when you have like, if we're going to play for and you take them off in, in like so if we're going to play for 5k man, like yeah. Okay. If we're going to play 5k man, I'm going to have 100,000. I'll be all I get it. Here. I get it. Terrace races here. Yeah, it's a big stack. Doug, there's 500. I can't just be psyched though. And something like that, like, it gets too fucked up for the really, really deep stack. Yeah. With the blinds being 200, 400, 800 dollar straddle with a 400 big blind ante, Terrace decides to make it 3500, which is a bit on the big side with Ace 10 suited under the gun one. That's what, that's what I'm saying. That's why. That's why I was saying earlier that I think the nickname's bad for like what people is like English me. gentlemen. This yeah. is a race, obviously. Because I'm never oh, going to KBM with the Cowboys. And KBM and Taras well, have history from game, a couple yeah, orbits yeah, ago. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, even if you told me the game, like, all night we're playing 5K Nick game, I would still buy deep because I just, like, I'm more interested so in the 13, poker. 500? So 10 more? <laughs> Taras in position. Facing a three bet. Right. I think poker's boring. I'm in. Makes the call. Let's play one more. So when you have one, big one. Big big game, Nick game. Action folds around to the big blind, who is KBM, also known as Keyboard Monkey on Twitter, and he makes it 13,500. Taras comes along. Round two, KBM and Taras. So, like, there's some aspects of it that I think are really good, uh -huh. but then there's some aspects of it just, like, super cool around each other for, like, five. Queen, 10, 9, two okay. clubs. I, I agree, that sucks. Okay. KBM I mean, I, I well in the lead. part of it, but... I don't know if that's that, like, I think that's that like, interesting. That's, just that's definitely like, not interesting, and that's, like, an annoying part of it, but I think, like, overall, you can just, like, play so much more hands, 17? and, like... Yeah, yeah. 17, like I believe you said, play, like, using a $25,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. like, plaque. Yeah, yeah. Like, it sucks to be, like... And we've seen like, Taras do crazy things, drawing debt. Problem, he is not like, afraid to put yeah. chips in the middle the fact that you with have, like, low equity. Problem, yeah, exactly. And he's very antsy to get rid of that hit button as soon as possible. 17, is that right? It definitely sucks, like... Uh, I was playing in like one game once recently where like me and the guy on my right each had like 200k in like a 50 100 game and then everyone else had 10k so whenever he's opening I'm just three betting him because I want to play big pots and then someone's just jamming on me for 20k yeah, yeah, every yeah. hand There's and then the just call. became like torture. After the flop of Queen 10 9 2 club, KBM decides to bet 17,000. And generally, when you're this deep, you can kind of have a mixed strategy of betting small or going for a lot of checks. Betting here is completely fine. He goes on a little bit of a big side, but that's it's completely reasonable. And Taraz goes for the call. Looking for an ace or a 10. No help on the turn. Six of spades here from the lodge in Austin, Texas. High stakes poker on a Saturday night. <laughs> Couple really plaques. Fun. What's it like to play a 200k pot, Sammy? <laughs> yeah. What's it like to play a card for $150,000? More. Just the bet. I love everything. 200,000, yeah. 200, 200, 50 you grand. When Everybody on the edge of their seats has that same type of feel from that previous hand between the two of these gentlemen. How much do you behind, roughly? Like 120. It's no longer Saturday Night Live. It's Saturday Night Lodge. We have dubbed him Taras the Lion. Yeah. And then what happens is you I don't think lions have many folds in them. And then it ends. And you want to And then people are kind of like. Going a little more adrenaline, you know? No, I definitely think it's good for the game. Makes the call. It's just bad for me. We're going to see a river, folks. Yeah, I agree. So I just don't give a fuck. I mean, I don't care. Yeah, you're good for it. People want. I don't care. 162,000. On an offsuit six turn, KBM bets 80% pot or around 50,000. And after a long, long deliberation, uh, Terrace decides to call. Now, this is actually a really, really bad call by Terrace as he is extremely low in his range. He can have hands like Queen Jack suited, Jack 10 suited, pocket tens, pocket nines, pocket queens, King Jack suited. You can't really get too much lower uh, in, in your range. And when a guy is both three bet your very large raise pre, 
and bet big on flop and turn, you should probably understand that your hand is no good anymore and go ahead and fold. This is where I think Terrace is starting to let this Nick game probably affect him too much. I don't know if he's a professional player or not. KBM is, is not a professional poker player, but it does play pretty well for being a, a crypto guy. You shouldn't let these, you know, do seven games or the Jack four off game or the stand up game or the Nick game let you make really bad decisions. Uh, he's betting $50,000 on the turn. You're very low in your range. Just muck. Just muck. Fold the bottom of your range. Like that, It's as simple as that. KBM can have all the over pairs. He can have queens, tens, and nines himself. He can have king, jack suited. He can have seven, eight suited. He doesn't really have that many bluffs in this spot. Perhaps he has a hand like ace, king. Perhaps he has like ace, jack of clubs. All of these hands are very high equity against your hand regardless, but he's still betting. The reality is the reality. And three of diamonds on the river, check mark for KBM. SBR less than one. I'm gonna play like one hand since I can massage me four bet somebody. KBM with the <laughs> over pair <laughs> blocking the nut straight. Uh, we're, we're, we're not sure. Ball, it? What do we see there? Both players sure with the nit button. I imagine a rip is coming from KBM. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. That's amazing. That's so amazing. <laughs> All in. There it is. So, so, what did you get, Ben? Taras, second pair. I almost didn't for both. Losing to a With less than pot back, KBM decides to go all in, which is completely reasonable as Taras has really not showed a lot of shrink. And as soon as Taras goes in the tank, of course, KBM knows that his hand is good. Lots. Also, beating a lot of draws that can break. And it's also the Nick game, and you know KBM, deep down inside, wants to be bluffed. Wants to bluff Taras for revenge. I'm willing to bet on this. Like, just shut the fuck up and bet. I'm just saying, what, what, what happened? No clubs in Terrace's hand. Can, like, he can convince all. himself yeah, that KBM's got a couple clubs. Body. He's making a desperate spot. river bluff. This is no bluff. Reversing the pressure from the last hand. Now it's all on Terrace. Do you have some kind of weird overpair or something? Like aces, kings? He does. Can Terrace go with his read and lay it down? And once again, even though Terrace is tanking a very long time, you have to think about where you're at in your range. One, you should have folded the turn, and now you're getting to the river in this very unique spot where you just have a very trivial fold. Yes, you block pocket aces, but other than that, KBM can have a ton of hands for value, including pocket queens, tens, nines, king jack suited, and so on. With with ace ten suited, you really don't do anything besides block pocket tens. You unblock a lot of the straights, which KBM can easily have. Sure, but... <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a lot, dude. It was it was honestly insane. Huh? It was not fun. So you, you gotta feel amazing. Yeah. I you feel must great. have like a set or something. Like Ross has that feeling like he's beat. Kings, aces. I mean, I think you have kings, aces, queens, king jack. Possibly, probably not very likely. You just bet, bet, bet. You just keep, like, you just keep barreling. You're crazy. Like, it, it just, you must have some kind of monster. I have a bluff catcher here. It's kind of important to note that this is not much of a bluff catcher from Terra's. He has a lot, like true bluff catchers would be hands like Queen Jack suited, Jackson suited, Pocket Kings, King Queen suited, stuff like that. Those are more in the bluff catching realm, maybe even a hand like Pocket Jacks, uh, where at least you block more straights. King Queen suited, obviously blocking top set and straights. These are bluff catchers. Ace 10 suited is just a very easy fold. Okay, I don't think you have Ace Queen. I mean, if you have Ace Queen, that's a very good play. Kind of, I guess. I don't know. Um, ten nine? I don't know. Yeah, ten. No, probably not. <sighs> okay, I mean, aces, kings, queens. I'll have you beat. Yeah, he's yet to name a hand that he actually beats. All right, I call. Make oh, call. what? Four hundred and twenty thousand. Light it up, chat, if you got it. Like the largest pot ever here right. on stream history. And KBM is going to find a way to yeah. sleep tonight. Holy Gets smokes. his revenge. 
I really think at the end of the day, Terrace got way too caught up in the Nick game and decided to make a bad turn call, which led him to leveling himself to calling the river. Now, in these kind of situations, you really have to think about your range, what better hands you can possibly have, what makes for your best calls or your best folds. And this is how you play poker in a nutshell. You don't just go by your gut feeling and say, oh, I think he's bluffing with, let's say, Jack-4 offsuit. Sure, maybe they have that sometimes, but if you want to make money long term, you need to think about their range and your range and how your range actually affects this board versus their range. I hope you guys enjoy this analysis. There's going to be videos posted every single day. Much love.